In this video, I'm going to be discussing the structure and function of the NMDA receptor, as well as an autoimmune disorder against the receptor called anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis. As we know, the nervous system relies on neurons connected by synapses, at which the electrical signals each neuron carries are transmitted across the synapse by the release of neurotransmitters, which are bound on the postsynaptic membrane. NMDA receptors are a type of ionotropic glutamate receptor, a class of ion channel neuroreceptors whose agonist is the neurotransmitter glutamate. However, NMDA receptors also bind a variety of other ions and small molecules like zinc, magnesium, glycine, and more. NMDA receptors are activated in a rather unique fashion, unlike most receptors. The NMDA receptor binds glutamate released into the synaptic gap, but has a magnesium ion lodged in its ion channel. This ion's removal requires a reversal of the charge inside the membrane from negative to positive to force the magnesium ion out, allowing ion flow of, most importantly, calcium through the channel. This reversal or depolarization is achieved by other glutamate receptors which simply open upon glutamate binding. This influx of calcium activates calcium-dependent cellular cascades, which increase the strength of the synapse and encourage the development of more synapses in the same signaling pathway. Therefore, the synapse is strengthened only when it is sufficiently stimulated, which is the principle behind long-term potentiation and the biological basis of learning. Now I'll discuss the structural features of the NMDA receptor. The NMDA receptors are a heterotetramer constructed of, as a dimer of dimers from two glutamate N1 subunits and two glutamate N2 subunits, each of which has multiple isoforms. The transmembrane domain of the receptor is made up of a series of four alpha helices labeled M1 through 4. Helices M1, 3, and 4 are anchored in the membrane and thus are primarily constructed of hydrophobic residues, while M2 does not cross the membrane. This domain shows type 3 and type 4 character because each subunit traverses the membrane a series of times, but the four protein subunits form a homotetramer as found in type 4 transmembrane proteins. The M3 segment of each receptor subunit forms the ion channel by experiencing pseudo fourfold symmetrical interactions. This region with sequence serine, tyrosine, threonine, alanine, asparagine, leucine, alanine, alanine, phenylalanine is highly conserved among glutamate receptors and couples ligand binding to channel gating so that when ligand binds the ligand binding domain, the conformational change that results open the M3 helices making space for ion flow. The ligand binding domains form from linkers <coughs> between the different M helical domains. Each subunit contains an S1 and S2 ligand binding domain, which form a clamshell-like tertiary structure which hinges between the bound and unbound states. The S1 domain immediately precedes the M1 helix in each subunit's amino acid sequence, and the S2 domain is formed from the linker between the M3 and M4 helices. The two glutamate N2 subunits bind L-glutamate, and the two glutamate N1 subunits bind glycine. If we observe the binding pocket for L-glutamate, in the structure of the ligand binding domain of a glutamate N2A subunit, we see that a threonine and serine are hydrogen bound to the amine group on glutamate, and threonine, aspartate, serine, threonine, and arginine are hydrogen bound to the four oxygen atoms in glutamate's two carboxyl groups. If we move to the binding pocket for glycine in the ligand binding domain of a single glutamate N1A subunit, we see that threonine, proline, and aspartate are hydrogen bound to the amine and a threonine, arginine, and serine are hydrogen bound to the two oxygens in the carboxyl group. It is these binding interactions which induce conformational change in the ligand binding domains, which couple to the opening of the receptor's ion channel. Having discussed the structure of the NMDA receptor, it is clear that the receptor is vitally important not just for learning, but for the vast range of excitatory signaling in the nervous system. A disease which makes this fact apparent is anti-NMDA receptor encephalitis, an autoimmune disorder targeting the NMDA receptor which results in its elimination. The result of this loss of NMDA receptors is a series of neurological symptoms which progressively worsen. These include irritability, hallucinations, psychosis, and seizures, and can ultimately lead to death. The root mechanism of this condition is the binding of the NMDA receptor, specifically the glutamate N1 aminoterminal domain of the protein by an anti-NMDA receptor antibody. This antibody binds the epitope within the glutamate N1 subunit and becomes cross-linked, which signals for the receptor's internalization and degradation by the cell. The specific structural region of the glutamate N1 subunit 
are two amino acid residues, asparagine 368 and glycine 369, as seen in this structure, as well as the alpha helix distant from these two residues in sequence, but nearby spatially. While it is not known exactly how each of these structures participates in epitope formation, there are a few aspects of these structural elements which increase antibody binding. The amino terminal domain of the glutamate N1 subunit has seven N-linked glycosylation sites, one of which is at the N368 residue as we see in the structure. Point mutation analysis showed that the presence of this glycosylation was a necessary component of the epitope as antibody binding was eliminated in mutants affecting the asparagine 368 residues glycosylation site. Additionally, in long-lived proteins like the NMDA receptor, spontaneous deamidation of asparagine residues to aspartate or isoaspartate is known to occur with relative frequency in unstructured regions of the protein. The asparagine 368 residue happens to be in a less rigid region of the protein, and upon deamidation, antibody staining was present but when a mutation specifically causing deamidation of the asparagine 368 residue to just aspartate rather than aspartate or isoaspartate was made, antibody staining was eliminated, which means that deamidation of the asparagine 368 residue to isoaspartate contributes to the formation of the epitope. Thirdly, mutation and antibody staining of the alpha helix with this sequence from residues 144 to 156 show that deletion of this st structure completely eliminates antibody staining. These are just some of the structural elements involved in the binding of the NMDA receptor by anti-NMDA receptor antibodies.